copy. Welcome back to the Power Breakfast Show. My name is Wahiga Mwaura and we get straight into the news of our review on this 18th day of December 2017. Let me quickly introduce my guests here in studio, starting from the far right, Michael Agwanda, governance expert. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mwaura. Right, and right next to him is uh, Vincent Kimosop, a policy and governance expert. Welcome to the program as well. Thank you. Good morning. Morning to you. Right, let's go straight into the day's uh, big stories in the papers. We'll start with the Daily Nation, page one. That should be projected on your screen. And we want to focus on uh, the state of our roads. This is the big topic this week, the big discussion, even if you go online. A lot of Kenyans concerned, they are traveling next week, and they are praying and hoping that all will go well, even as they go to their ancestral homes or go for holiday as well. And the title of the Daily Nation, as, as one of the headlines is, Road Crashes Claim 27 Lives in 24 <laughs> Hours. And to get the big story, you have to turn to the back page, um, where that is basically the only story on the back page. Let me just give you one or two details. 27 people were killed in a span of 24 hours in two separate accidents as road carnage reared its ugly head once again. 17 passengers died on the spot last night when the Matatu rammed a truck at Ngoliba on the Sika Garissa Highway. The Matatu was heading to Kitui from Nairobi. If you scroll a bit further down, um, what some of the drivers, this is what they had to say, the drivers of the two trucks interviewed by the nation said the accident was not due to the Matatu driver's fault. They attributed the crash to a mechanical problem. Um, and a bit further on in the same story, the fatalities bring to 34. The total number of people who have died in accidents along the highway in one week. Of course, we want to begin by sending our condolences to the family and friends of all those who've lost their lives uh, over the last couple of days. A very unfortunate series of events, and I want to get comments now from my guests here in studio. I'll start with you, Michael. Let me get your thoughts on this. If you look at the trends, a few things are you know, seemi you know, seemingly very similar. Mm -hmm. The timings, a busy season, a lot of passengers on the road, a lot of demand for people who want to travel, so we can assume that drivers are getting little sleep. We're also seeing a lot of head-on collisions, and the cars primarily involved include PSVs, lorries, matatus. Should we be reading a bit more into this? Uh, and, and let me get your thoughts on this. Good morning, viewers. Uh, Mauro, this is an appalling moment uh, for a country, and more so the transport sector. When you hear many people dying within 24 hours, several people dying, and uh, you hear the statements from the NTSA, the police, and you hardly hear anything from the Ministry of Transport, you know, an official communication. And this is one thing that people have talked out about, uh, that we, we need probably to hear from the Minister of Transport. We need probably to hear from the fears of transport. But um, that aside, <coughs> It is a rush hour time uh, when people are in Christmas. Everybody wants to travel to be with the family. Unfortunately, that's when the prices, our uh, transport tra prices, are also hiked by the transport industries. Unfortunately, that's also the time that the, the drivers want to make as many trips as they can to their destination. And how do you make those many trips? You have to overspeed and you have to overload so that you can maximize on the opportunity. Perhaps this is the time that some of them want to finish their little building at home by making those many mm. trips. But that's aside. Many people are dying now. What I've said before, and I will say it here again, is NTSA and the police are probably not doing what they're supposed to do, as well as will be expected. They are so much into nubbing people who have caused their offense instead of preventing the offense itself. Probably, the strategy must now a change from just nabbing people and catching people off guard, hiding in a little corner and then suddenly, you know, waving them down and saying, oh, you know you just overspread here. And, and then you start haggling on how much you need to pay them. Or 1,000 and again says, no, no, it's 5,000, it's 10,000. This offense is so huge that it has, and you know, it's so huge. And what happens in ordinary cases is as soon as you give the money to the cop, you are annoyed. The money that you are trying to, uh, you know, save is already gone with the cop. Now you even overspeed further so that you get your you destination make up and make right. up for what you've just lost on the road. I think it is high time that NTSA shows their huge presence on the road, not to have the offense, you know, you know, culprits, but to avert the 
possible accident that will happen. Okay. We know I, will, I will come back to you because I want to get your thoughts on possible solutions. If we were to come up with about five ideas to deal with this, what would those be? I'll come to you for that. Let me give Vincent a chance to give his opening thoughts. So you can go ahead. Um, <coughs> first of all, I think I'll say our prayers and thoughts are with the families. Uh, the, the, when we talk about 37 people, those are not, those are not uh, good news or uh, cabbages or those statistics are, those, are, uh, those are human beings mm. those are families those are f those are providers they are they i think as we, that is exactly the meaning so for me really i pray for comfort and strength for them and then coming back to uh, having been involved in road safety there are policy uh, problems there are also in implementation and enforcement problems and then finally there is a, a culture problem so when we want to come up with interventions, it's very easy at times to, to see uh, in fact the institutions, NTSA police, and we forget uh, the, the policy, we forget the culture problem. So in my view, one of the major mistakes we've made in our public transport in Kenya is that first we don't have a public transport system in Kenya. What has happened is that you have a public system that has uh, outsourced a public good into the private sector. And you know in private sector, the motivation for doing business is the bottom line, the profit. So this is something we have to sort it out. Uh, as, uh, assuming Wahiga, JKA, that we allowed anyone to land at JKA at will, what is going to happen? We, we are going to have chaos. That is exactly what has happened in our public transport issue. If, if you look at the behavior in the Matato sector. It's, it's been, the only difference is that these ones are moving on the ground. You could imagine planes Learning at JK is the same thing. So we, we need to reflect back and then r uh, restore order, first, of course, from a policy perspective. Number two, move to the institutions, as you're talking about NTSA, the police, and all that. Then finally, uh, we need to address culture. One of the major challenges we're here that uh, I'll tell you, look at even our insurance uh, policy in our country. Our insurance policy, mainly the three of us could be driving. But I could be a risk driver, and at the end of the year, the premium that we pay is the same. So we have socialized, uh, the, 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 we've socialized our insurance uh, schemes instead of even moving it to risk based. So that when we got or uh, Vincent or uh, George pays for what is known, the risk, the exposure that they have. So in my view, uh, I would say that this is a time where we need to sober up. And I can tell you, knowing that many people are going to travel going up country, I would actually agree with him. This is the time that uh, the leading organs from the ministry all the way to the police should be speaking with one voice. Look at even the mm -hmm. of the roads. Such an one. I, I, I use that road while going uh, up country. Right from up when you uh, past Molo, coming down, you're descending all the way to Salga. Now, if, if a track that is not in good condition and um, uses uh, uh, uses uh, maybe control, you're assured that the oh, vehicle's mechanical going... Mechanical brake failure. I mean, all those many things will happen, that's right. Me, uh, I would say that ultimately we have to speak to culture, we have to speak to policy, we have to speak to our institutions, and then therefore enforcement. Okay, I'll, I'll come at, uh, to get more thoughts on that, but to those of you watching, many thanks indeed for tuning in wherever you're watching us from. I want to get your thoughts on the state of our roads uh, in Kenya today. Of course, the warning statistics that we are reading about in today's papers, the reports we receive almost every other day, an accident in this location, in that location. What are your thoughts? What are your concerns? Even as we come down to the festive season, 2242 is our SMS line. And of course, what ideas do you have? What solutions should we be talking about implementing in this season? Uh, talk to us also on social media, at Citizen TV Kenya, on Facebook and Twitter. And I'll be reading your feedback throughout the course of the show. Michael, let me come back to you. I get the feeling that we have had this discussion before, right here in studio. What are we going to do differently this time around? Because there's a worry that next year, in December, you know, you two gentlemen might be back here again and you know, think we need to do this, we need to do that. So, so what's going to change? How do we get out of what we seem to have is a very vicious cycle, Michael? We have a reactive government and institution in this country. We do not plan and put policy and implement those very policy. We create institutions, we create cons um, uh, commissions, and we create organizations like NTSA was just created the other day. If you look at what they're doing, that's exactly what um, our KRA was doing and what the police is doing. They are supposed to amalgamate those responsibilities and put them on NTSA, but you realize that the presence of police is still there. But the presence of current air 
care and is also favored because they have to take taxes. And so what we are creating is a reactive, a new react, reaction and on issues that are affecting this country and not follow the, following them with policy and implementable policies. What we are having in this country is we know for a fact that some of these public transport drivers are drunks. We hardly intentionally and deliberately test these guys for drugs before they get the license. I have not seen anybody getting a license in this country tested for drugs to see whether they are involved in drugs and drugs are in their system. When you drive when you are impaired and intoxicated, you're going to cause an accident, and more so at night. That's one. So I believe that NTSA, instead of really involving themselves on those uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, private uh, vehicle owners uh, in the night when they're just coming from the bar, of course they'll find a number of them drunk, but you have people who are carrying many, many lives in their single vehicle that perhaps need to be regularly checked. Yet, so yes, so we don't. Check their priorities. That should be checked, those priorities. You have all these cycles, these car cycles, we've seen in the Matatus, people, you know, cajoling with, with pickpockets and, and in, in Nairobi, we've, we've seen cases of people, bad people, literally riding with the Matatu drivers, and what about just drinking and driving. A lot of them are into that. Secondly, we know that Chechang won and, uh, and, and um, <coughs> you know, uh, that junction that, that is always a problem has always had issues of, tra uh, of, of accident. Why haven't this government prioritized at least a dual code on that specific well, area. The plans are in place now. The plans are in place mm -hmm. in this December. We've also talked about this in the past. In fact, several years we've been talking about it. Whether it will be implemented or not, you know, these are some of the questions that people are asking. Why do we want to react instead of having a long-term plan to ensure that there's a dual coverage in this place? It is in such a one area where there was a tractor trailer that had oil that busted there and many, many people died. Mm -hmm. It's still the same, same story and the government has not done anything. Does the when public have any role to play in all this? The public has a great role. I think it was on Friday, if you look at the standard newspaper, there was a lorry, in the first page, actually the second page, uh, there was a lorry with so many people in it, in Migori, and so many luggage on top of it, and I think it was a market day. And that day, I think so many people had also died on the very day, and that's why the photo was there. Now, that lorry is there because there is no public transport. Nobody is able to get a meaningful bus to take them to their destination. For that reason, they will grab on any Thing. This country must have a public transport policy and bring buses. I know that uh, 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 Kidero, Governor Kidero, former governor of Nairobi, had plans of getting uh, long trucks, I mean buses in this, in, in this city, to be able to haul people from one destination to the other. That must also be seen to be happening in other places. Okay. It never happened. I think it was only two buses that came. But again, oh, yes. when we are talking about issues of insurance, as my brother here alluded to, I've lived in the United States for many, many years. You will dread to get an accident once or twice every single year because there is a point system. The first accident, they will give you maybe two, if you're on the fault, mm -hmm. two, three points. And you only have about 12 points in a year. And let me tell you, you do not want to waste those points. Because the if you do, real. they will get your mm -hmm. uh, driver's license out of you. Okay. And besides that, your paying of insurance will triple or even double. And in some severe cases, insurance will not be able to give you insurance. Okay, okay. allow me to interrupt you there. Because um, I mean, I, 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 I outlined the four issues, the policy, uh, then you have the culture. Uh, the culture, and then you have the institutions, and then the implementation. Uh, the, the first thing that I, I think even the media needs to be very categorical is that we do not have a public transport system. So what would you call what we, we have right now? We have an outsourced public good to the private sector. And no private sector is profit driven. Mm -hmm. The number of trips, th 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 that is a sign. So the first conversation that we, we should be having is how do we restore back public transport into the country? That, that should be directive that is that is transport is people is and not necessarily is make a profit. Um, it's just like uh, public schools. The way yeah. we have public schools, th that is what should be happening on public transport. Uh, and, and this directly goes to the governments of the day that 
uh, the conversation of restoring public transport should be happening. Now, number two is that I think we should not be directly be quick to blame, for example, the Matatu, because uh, we have had trucks uh, causing accidents. I think it is important to point that um, the only issues of safety, ensuring that if you are if you are driving uh, a bus that is carrying uh, fuel, it should not be driving at night, or it should be in good condition. So that's a culture and is maintenance that is enforcement. Uh, when we come to the part of um, uh, institutions that work, um, I understand that uh, at times we have institutions that tend to work at cross purpose. The the, the delineations of function between NTSA, the police, the the, the caring. It is important that even though these institutions have different functions, they are targeting the Kenyan people by uh, working together. Now, I want to say that uh, I, I, you alluded to something that we have discussed this before. It has happened in the past. I, I, I am an eternal optimist. We had a problem in the in the in the Ministry of Education uh, two years ago. The issue of cheating of examinations, buying of exams, and uh, when we had a uh, policy directive that this should not happen again. Uh, 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 as in Matiangi, together with Professor Magor, they did not change any law, they did not change any people. Only change was attitude, focus, and direction. And someone said, and and those two, the fact that they were there at that time, and, and that's why I'm pointing out part of the reason why we see that change. I'm saying there was a problem. You see, the, since the, my, my, the message I'm trying to pass is that there was a problem of examination te cheating. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for, a period, for, a long, for a long time, mm -hmm. I mean, even the aid that some institutions used to, know, used to have, you know, people would celebrate, but there was a big but. Uh, now, that has changed, and today you can actually see that it is possible for examinations cheating to be an issue of the past. So, the same thing needs to happen in the road uh, uh, sector, and I can tell you. Uh, we, we, uh, when John Mishuki was the minister for for, uh, for transport, uh, people would say it is not possible to bring order into the Matatu sector. He actually said it is possible. He had the backing of the president, the political will, and there were changes in the Matatu sector. So I believe that uh, as, as people who share such platforms mm -hmm. we have, we have to constantly ring the bell of hope that things have to change. And it comes with fast, strong leadership. I can tell you. Should the box stop the transport? Yes. Uh, I, I think this is the time that uh, I, I, the president has spoken. Uh, he spoke in his speech uh, during the Jamuri Day celebration. What, in my view, should happen is mm -hmm. that we should be seeing the translation of, of that policy directive into action coming from the ministry to the relevant department okay. all the way to the, to the people. Okay, okay. Allow me to interrupt you there because I want to bring two other stories to your attention and get your comments also related to what we're talking about right now. If you turn to page three of the standard, drive us to get smart licenses next month. The Transport Authority will, as from next month, roll out the much-anticipated smart driving licenses. NTSA is also testing a new technology to link vehicle number plates to driving licenses in a bid to reduce road accidents. Yesterday, Nyanza Regional Manager Ezekiel Kowet said the new technology is aimed at helping to identify rogue drivers. And I think, Michael, you alluded to that just a bit, giving us an example of what happens back in the United States. I can also take you to page 12 of the Daily Nation, also something that you know, we will tie into everything we're talking about. On page 12, it's all about health and devolution. If I can just uh, quickly go there and read you a little report done by Health Watch by the Daily Nation. Spending on health still low despite years of devolution. Kenya is a good way off from meeting the pledge it made more than 15 years ago to spend 15% of its budget on health. A nation review of county and national government budget shows health constituted 8% of the combined national and county budget allocations, which is about half of the country's long-standing commitment amounting to 172.5 billion Kenyan shillings. Why did I pick these two stories? On one hand, NTSC telling us, look, we're getting smart licenses, we hope to use them in future to catch rogue drivers, and maybe we'll be able to penalize them, you know, from the example that Michael has given. But on the other hand, the Daily Nation is telling us, in terms of health, a lot of these accidents happening in areas where the nearest hospital is a county hospital, and, and yet the nation is telling us we have not invested in our health system as well. So on one hand, we need to fix the roads, but on the other hand, could more lives have been saved mm. with better health care? Let's talk about those two issues, Michael. Let me...
start with you. Good news and... The, the, the bad news is that in 2001, when uh, AAU had a meeting in Abuja, they agreed that actually for us to move our health um, services forward, we will need at least 15% of our annual mm -hmm. budget. Uh, Kenya has actually oscillated between 6 and 8 percent. Their budget in total between the government, I mean the central government, as well as the county government is about 8 percent. Unfortunately, what they release to the counties is about 2 percent. And even further, unfortunately, what is implemented is about 5 percent. In fact, the 8 percent part of it is just a budget of it. What is implemented down there is about 5 percent. That's the most unfortunate thing. And if you read that story in its, in, in, in its entirety, we had the governor of Nuri just the other day die on a, on, a, on a road crash. His body was on the road for about 45 minutes before he was even gotten out of the place. Unfortunately, as such, a governor is not your little guy on the street. This is a guy who is taking care of the entire county. If his body will be on the road for about 30 to 45 minutes, then there's a serious problem. And then we're talking about most dispensaries with about that 5% on the rural area not having medicine and not having even enough stuff. Let me draw your attention to what happened in Sichuan just the other day. You saw these bodies and people that were hurt in the accident crash being wheeled into the hostel by Ascaris mm. or the guards. And uh, the photo was very, very clear. That can tell you that indeed if there were professionals, enough professionals in that hospital, the security person would not be helping to wheel the bodies and uh, the, um, you know, the, the sick into the hospital. Their job is not to wheel. Their job is supposed to guard and keep security. But you know, they are short of staff and for that reason, anybody around must be able to help. You who, saw, can help who, who can know, be helped? You help saw those welcome. two kids mm -hmm. being held by a nurse, literally. You know, nobody was there to help other than those few. And if you look at the uniform, those nurses were actually nursing students that were helping in, in that state. And so you can see that a lot, you know, the nurses had just been on strike for 151 days. The doctors had just been on strike for 100 straight days. My friend, the pay for the medical staff is not there. So we're looking at the multifaceted issues in the health industry. But we are also seeing a situation where the government is not heeding to the call by any themselves and they signed to that treaty that indeed we are supposed to do 15%. If you don't care about the sick, most likely you're not c going to care about the development of your country. You must have a healthy individuals in your country for them to generate wealth in that very country. If you find a guy dying because of just loss of blood, because no blood is in the hospital, mm. then that is an issue. While that ought to have been thought of before, that practically people will have accidents, they can come here, we must have a blood bank. Some of those dispensaries most of them don't have. In fact, a lot of this money that we are seeing, about 5% of what we're talking about, mm -hmm. is invested in the cities. It is invested in those uh, county uh, hospitals, referral hospitals. It's not invested in the, in the, in the and then you know very well that when accident happens, my friend, it will be very far away from KNH. <laughs> it will be very far away from Nairobi. Uh, you know, it will be very far away. The guy who is going to be there immediately is that ill-equipped dispensary. I know that the MOU that was signed by, by, by the Guarantee doctors, and, and, and mm -hmm. I hope that will be implemented. But it can't be implemented when the government is not releasing even 10% of its budget to the health sector. Okay. Um, the, the three, uh, three things. Eh? One is uh, uh, I, I, I am a firm believer that when we pass the constitution, we made a mistake on the health services provision, particularly the human management mm -hmm. of the, the human resource management. I, I, I would have uh, I, when I would have uh, said uh, this, that there are three things any country should not joke with. 
One, is it security? Two, it is education, and then three, it's healthcare. Okay. Uh, uh, we, we, when you look at health, when you look at education, and you look at security, they're still managed at the national level, and the constitution provides a framework where this could be a shared function. I still believe that in the education sector, maybe the infrastructure component can be devolved while centrally managing the human resources. On health, we devolve everything. From a policy perspective, I speak uh, looking at the entire chain because of my background. Uh, like if today, just to look at the evolution of the health sector, the framework that facilitates the transfer, uh, the the hierarchy is is non-existent. We devolved everything uh, to the counties, and that's why naturally you saw the problems in the uh, in the. Um, in the strikes that mainly affected the healthcare sector, unlike what we've had in the past. So I think it is high time we have had that conversation because when we are saying we want to fix our roads because of road safety, on this other end, if you don't have good healthcare, what happens? There are even high chances of people whom would have been saved would actually uh, pass on uh, as a result of that. There are even new dimensions. I was talking to, I was speaking uh, two weeks ago in a health uh, conference in Muru, and one of the things that you discover is that as a result of even uh, the border borders, the, the, the is it the, the, the border border, border right? Right. Uh, yeah there are even new things that are emerging currently like uh, there are hospitals whereby a significant percentage of their bed capacity is actually uh, uh, taken by uh, accidents we even had a special wards the other thing that we also are seeing is new emerging diseases and injuries that have not been uh, that, that uh, p historically some of the doctors have witnessed as in complicated accidents that you actually uh, maybe like um, uh, I, I was talking to somebody in Uganda saying that even children at times backbones be breaking as a result of them being put on border border these are things that uh, you know even doc doctors have to uh, use experience in the, in the processes of treating some mm -hmm. so new challenges that I imagine that our level of capacity and our ability to deal with them, we are not uh, well advanced. I would say that um, we, we, if we could, there are solutions. Like, if you look at the healthcare system in Israel, it is so primary care uh, based. In the sense that everybody, the first reporting, for example, is at the dispensary, and all the data is available there. Mm -hmm. So even doctors have a very good historical map of uh, how you're doing as, mm -hmm. a, as an individual, mm -hmm. and the state has invested heavily in ensuring that dispensaries and, and work. At the moment today, uh, the, if you listen to the confessions of doctors, some of them, everything, including malaria, nothing wrong with malaria in the sense that it's not, it's a serious disease, yes, but you find everybody is running to Kenya. So the mamalusis, the, 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 what is it, the pumuanis, the all these are, are, the gadis are not working. What happens? We put a lot of pressure into the referral hospitals. So what happens from, from professional ethics, doctors cannot send uh, sick people away. So they have to take care of them and I can tell you uh, the referral system is not there for working because it becomes like any other dispensary so I think um, I as we have this discussion mm -hmm. with the Wariga, I hope that it will not end when the news headlines are no longer when uh, the, the, the reports on the accident go down, are off, go mm -hmm. down. I, I, w I will say this uh, one, one, of the, uh, one of the things I have to say uh, this morning I really appreciate is that um, uh, w the president, when he's choosing his cabinet section for he health, one of the problems you have had in the Ministry of Health is that the Ministry of Health has been very thin from a policy uh, uh, policy di dimension. And I and, and I can so they, would say, they would say no, that is I, not I, true. I, I have the evidence. We have been in the sector. Okay. If you look at the number of private members' bills in Parliament, uh, in the in the health sector, there are more. There are actually not less than ten. You don't see the same coming from uh, a national treasury in the sense that you don't have a lot of private members' bills on matters of uh, finance. Why? Because they are very strong and have taken good control about their policy space. I, I can tell you today, the to the law, private member, <coughs> the aesthetics and nutrition, private member, the cancer bill, private member, tobacco control bill, no private no member. No so it tells you that in terms of the ability and command of their sector, there is a problem. And I hope that our, our president will get a CS and a PS who really will take charge and leadership 
of the health doctor. Okay. They're not here to defend themselves, um, but we, I mean, you've presented a very convincing case nevertheless. Um, let me read a quick SMS before we take a break. Wilkinson from Tuka, uh, very sad. He says he actually lost his wife and son to a traffic accident at the age of 30. This is what he has to say. A traffic accident means different things to different people. It only means something if a person we know was involved. That's when it becomes, you know, very real. The problem is we don't have any policies to guide us as a nation. The implementers of the available weak policies make a cut out of it at the price of blood. I don't quite understand what they mean there. But he also goes on to say we cannot afford to always talk. We need an action-oriented man at the top to align things there once and for all. That's how we leave this debate. We take a quick break now. When we return, we'll be talking about other stories in the paper. You're watching the Public for Show live on Citizen TV. We'll be right back. <laughs>